So anyone living under a rock uh, where he's unaware, but otherwise everyone else knows what's happened in the past couple of days, um, Lydia Thorpe comes out and says that it's a sexist response from the Prime Minister because he says it's a, a matter for the party to deal with as opposed to her where she should go and get help. Well, I'll tell you the great difference, like we all know, about Lydia Thorpe and Barnaby Joyce. Barnaby Joyce doesn't shut down the Mardi Gras because of her, his, uh, his bad knees thanks to netball. He's not crawling around out the front of uh, Parliament House uh, <laughs> protesting against the right of women to speak. He's not standing abusing police officers at the front of immigration detention centres and he's not suggesting that we need to decolonise the country, OK? But we know where this goes in the next couple of days. What are your thoughts? Oh, look, I I'm the last one that'll throw a stone at Barnaby Joyce because uh, not that I've been in that exact pr uh, same predicament, but we've all been under the weather from time to time on, on the source. But uh, what I'll say to Barnaby is, look, it could have been a whole lot worse, mate. You could have shit yourself. It would have been even worse for you. But uh, he'll get over this. He's got that Aussie larrikinism thing about him. You have he been at get a footy weekend in Vicky Queensland. Barnaby, you'll be fine, mate. Yeah, you have. You, look at him. He's still got that footy weekend glow. Anyway, that's all right. Relax. Now, I'm gonna, now thanks very much. I had that subject because I wanted to avoid a meeting. Now I've got to go and have another meeting tomorrow. Did that really get said on television? We love you, mate. Uh, all right. Uh, now, uh, Nicole, though, there is one thing that is worth saying regardless of whether we're talking about uh, uh, a politician from the Conservative side or anywhere else. Canberra is a town filled with your enemies, right? If, if you go to dinner, so if you and I go to dinner, there'll be green staffers too over, right? He'll be taking photos to misinterpret conversation, right? When they see something like that in Canberra, somebody's going to film it, right? They're not interested in what's actually going on, they just care about how it looks. So, overall, I just reckon, how hard is the message to get through to, to, to politicians when they're serving? Just, you can enjoy the cans at home because it's probably less chance of someone taking a photo, but Canberra is enemy territory for Conservatives. Yeah, it is. Uh, yes, it is, Paul. First of all, I just want to say I sincerely hope that Barnaby's OK. Of I course. know him well. He's a good yeah. mate. And I know Vicky and the little boys as yep. well. They used to drop into my office on their way home most nights in Parliament. So I really hope they're OK. It's up to Barnaby to, to explain himself. But honestly, I'm, I'm with Vicky on this. Who's the um, individual, the, the not terribly pleasant or nice individual who was filming someone on the ground, um, you know, in a state of some distress and then sending it off to the media rather than checking that he's OK? So, as I said, up to Barnaby to explain himself, but um, it's really, really poor behaviour on behalf of this individual who did the filming. Now, Jan, I'm not, I'm not sin bidding you here, but I did want to get Jenna and Nicole's uh, opinion and then yours as well about uh, this polling suggesting that uh, women are now leading uh, when it comes to the coalition, 51-49. But then mysteriously, Jenna, all of these think pieces start mm. turning up in the Turnbull Times and in the Channel 9 newspapers that women are more progressive. <laughs> so the data doesn't quite match. Is somebody trying to change the narrative here? I, well, I hope someone starts changing the narrative soon, as well as maybe some policy positions, because I think, Paul, women are a lot like blokes. We just want to see some actual direction in Correct. terms of what's going to happen. How are you fixing childcare in this country? You keep banging on about how it's getting better for working families. Rather than an Instagram post, can we actually see that play out in real life with these subsidies and how that's going to play out? As well as things like healthcare, which is you know happening around the country. I know that it is a state and territory issue, but take some leadership on it, as well as things like education. Focus on stuff that actually impacts our daily life rather than this, is this esoteric, you know, feel-good posts and legislation that no-one really wants to, to, to think about and focus on things like cost of living. And I think that's why, uh, you know, senators like Jane Hume are having such good cut-through because their messaging is so consistent about the economy. That's all we want to know about moving forward because we've just been told to expect nothing but uncertainty for the next 12 months. Well, but also, you know... People can see, again, I'm sorry to keep banging it in, but as we know, you keep saying it until people are sick of it, and that's when people start remembering the too little, too late stuff, right? Mm. Which is, you know, we've had this whole conversation about, oh, did the lie matter? I'll tell you what's going to matter, that you've told people you've changed their lives and they realise it's 14 bucks a week, right? Mm. And I'm pretty sure one or two Sheilas, and I say that with love, have already worked that out. Um, <laughs> now, Nicole, but again, again, this smoke signal being sent up by the usual, right? That the sisterhood is of the left now, and unless you're of the left joining us in the march further left, then you're not part of the sisterhood. Now, we know particularly the persecution um, that happens of conservative women. We know you've had to live that your whole damn life. But they can stick this uh, wherever they want to, because I'm sorry, it, uh, 
men, women, straight, gay, black, white, up, down, thin, fat, whatever, we're all individuals, we all make up our own mind. The idea that, you know, one group is travelling in one direction because a couple of writers, uh, you know, banging out a column say that, BS. It's demeaning to women, Paul, Correct. and Correct. this is what has irked me about this whole debate for, you know, years and years. Uh, women are perfectly capable of making up their mind about what is and isn't a good policy position and they will vote accordingly. Um, as for this suggestion that they're getting more progressive, I think it's rubbish, as you've just pointed out. What I would say, though, is uh, like Jenna has, um, um, uh, has highlighted a range of issues that impact women, concerned about health care, child care and cost of living. So mm. women just like men, but women are facing you know, increased food prices, rental, mortgage, power prices. If they've got kids, they're worried about putting their kids through school, affording the school uniforms. And for women, though, the difference with blokes is that uh, we tend to spend a bit more on our appearances, although, Paul, I'm sure you spend a lot at the hairdresser every week getting your beard <laughs> trimmed and things, but <laughs> women spend a lot on our appearances. So... Where this starts, where this starts kicking in for women, and I wonder if this is what's happening, if they're seeing women moving away from Labor who promised the world and have delivered the exact opposite, have delivered more cost increases, not less, is women are having to start to, uh, starting to have to um, uh, extend the time between haircuts or maybe not having a manicure and all of those sorts of things that they're used to just being able to afford to do. But because cost of living, because, you know, the practical reality of paying your rent or your mortgage and, and looking after your kids if you have them and seeing the price increases at the supermarket is really starting to bite, I wonder if this is one of the reasons that we're seeing women saying no thanks. And also, on top of that, uh, we know 60% of Australians were deeply unhappy with The Voice and Labor's plan to divide the nation.